Welcome to Wild Wisdom Podcasts. I am your most bodacious host, Peter Stockbridge, and I'm here to talk to you today about trauma and grief, how you can survive and overcome it. Um, I did a podcast on this a couple of weeks back, but it wasn't nearly as in-depth as I wanted it to be, so I am starting again. I've gone back to the drawing board and... So here we are. Um, I'm going to explain briefly about me, where I'm come, where I've come from, and to give you a bit of a perspective. Um, And then I'm going to be talking about the stages of grief, um, and then a list of things that you can do to survive these stages. So it's a bit of a roadmap, and whilst this is. In largely scientifically acknowledged these stages um, it does have my own spin on it um, and I hope that it helps you um, uh, with your with your grief so let's kick it off um, I was born with congenital toxoplasmosis um, which is something that science hasn't fully understood yet um, I also had mild ADHD and autism, which I believe I had pretty much grown out of. Um, I also had uh, a deep sense of depression, um, and I'll get back to that third point in a second. Um, But for the the large portion of the first 11 years of my life were really good. I had a great upbringing, and... Despite one or two weird situations, uh, it was all really nice. Uh, And then at 12 years old, my whole life changed. Three major things happened. They were uh, me going from the religious school to a normal public school uh, and the culture shock for that was so huge I, I didn't really realize the the lasting impact that that had on me um, my parents split um, my father did some things that were wrong and um, they both decided to split um, so I was stuck with my mother and my two sisters. Um, and I was also sexually abused, not by any family member, but by uh, someone I was acquainted with. And so, yeah, those three things, you know, they, they at 12 years old, I didn't really realize the impact that that would have on me, you know. So I I spent my time ever since catching up. When I got to this public school, I felt like I was so behind, I knew nothing, that I I, I had to um, sort it out quickly. And I, I did it my way. I didn't have any support from anyone. I didn't have any social worker. <coughs> so I had to face my life on my own. Um, you know, yeah, my mother was around and my my sisters were around, but I didn't feel like I could relate to any of them. Uh, I I, I felt like I needed my father for that, and he had, you know, for all intents and purposes at the time, disappeared. Um, Since then, I've, I've had many more moments of grief and trauma hit me, and... I feel like I have faced too much for one person. And when I look at how the public are in general, in terms of, you know, how they live their life, the day in to, you know, the day in, day out routines, I feel different to that, you know. I, I feel like I'm I'm suffering a lot more. Whether it's needless or not, I, I don't know, you know. I just, I've always felt like... Uh, like I've 
was always depressed. Now, I don't know whether the events that happened to me at 12 are linked with this sense of acute depression. I'm not aware or sure yet whether I had this depression before I was 12. And this is something that I'm still trying to work out. Uh, so it's, it's not, you know, really over for me, but I faced a lot of pain, um, especially in terms of a, um, a lost friend or family member that you really felt for. Uh, my father passed away a few years ago and I feel like I'm at the tail end of that grief. Um, so th this is where I wanted to kind of base the process on. Um, so, uh, you know, what you're suffering is going to be different. Um, it's not going, you know, it, you may, it may not be, um, the loss of a loved one that you have trauma over. It could be something else completely. Um, you may not, you know, have even liked this person. If it was someone that passed away, you may have had mixed feelings for them or may not have liked them. There are a million and one variances of why you'd be uh, grieving or suffering trauma. But I think that the, the basics of it are, you know, relatively similar. So I'm going to take you through the stages of grief. So you, you've got the first stage, which is the shock stage, the numb stage. And it's different for everyone, of course, as is all the stages of, on this list. The, the time span of these stages are different for everyone. And you may not even have a shock stage, but there, there will usually be a sort of a numb slash shock phase where you, perhaps you, the news has, hasn't even entered your brain. You haven't even started to calculate it yet. Uh... And that will last, as I said, an indeterminate amount of time, depending on what type of person you are. And then there's the realization stage where it does hit you and you grieve so hard uh, and you're in so much pain over it. This is by far the toughest part um, of grief or trauma. and it will come at you in waves. It might be full on even for a while. So that again will last an indeterminate amount of time. Then there's the, the, the stage that follows, which is the, you know, the sorrow, the grief. Um, and it's this, it, it, you know, it's a depreciation of these feelings and, and emotions that you're having it's a sort of a, you know, you're at the top of a hill and you're traveling down it. So all these, these emotions and feelings are going to get smaller and far more infrequent. Um, so the, the, the third stage, which is the grief sorrow stage, is where things are starting to uh, ease off a little bit, but you're still getting them and they're still quite strong. Uh, and then the fourth stage is the fallout where, well, I, I, you know, I call it the fallout where y you've almost sort of accepted it now. Um, you've gotten over the initial pain and you're living with the fallout. And this is where you are coming to terms with him or her as a person or the event itself as a thing, as I said, the, the, what you're suffering can be completely uh, different to what I suffered. Um, and, you know, it obviously will be. But my point is that you, at this stage here, you will be starting to contemplate what's happened. And, and with the view to working out some kind of peace of mind to it you know you're trying to come to terms with with these events um that's kind of roughly it but i've added on a couple of things at the end which has happened to me and this may or may not happen to you i can't guarantee any of the the following stages here 
the the mm. second realization, which is where I realized that I've taken on part of my father's passion and his drive. I feel like I have inherited his wishes, so to speak, or some of his wishes at least. Um, and I would say that it's a sort of, it's a second realization where if, you know, I've had obviously that feeling of, of, of a part of his spirit has entered me. I would like to think and I would like to suggest that that might happen to you. Um, if it's, uh, if you are grieving over a lost one, of course. And then I wrote down after it, lasting imprint and inheritance of passion and drive, which is what I've just explained, basically, you know. You have, um, you'll remember him or her and you will, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You will, you will, you'll carry on with your life knowing that the time you had together uh, was a special time and a good time. So those are the stages of grief. And now, you know, as I said, this isn't going to be a scientific, the sort of certificated seal of approval type of thing. It is mostly, but it's got my spin on it. Okay. So in terms of surviving these stages though, right? There's a, a, a number of things that you can do. Now, some of these things might be fairly obvious to you. Some of them may not be, but um, I thought I'd list them anyway in case you weren't aware or in case you had forgotten them, you know, anything can help, right? So the first one, which is arguably the most important, and it, you know, I would say it is, but it, it isn't as well. And it's it's isolation with support, right? So if you can, if you can isolate yourself, but have support close to hand when you need it, that's a good state to be in, I think, right? Now, don't panic if you can't get into that state. Say, like, if you live in a house with loads of people and they keep bothering you, um, you can request to be left alone. Uh, so if you can get into a position, you know, like that, that'd be good. Now, if you live on your own, you know, that's fine, but make sure that, you, you know, you can ring someone or someone can come round and, and someone who will genuinely be uh, listening and taking things on board and being em um, empathic with you as opposed to just being sympathizing with you you know you need someone that's going to genuinely understand you someone close but as I said don't panic if you don't have those things or one of those things um, you can do this without that, but it, it, it's the first thing that uh, I would say that you should seek out. Now, the also, this requires a bit of sort of mental training, if you like, you, um, and it's easier said than done, but zoning out on entertainment, okay? So whether that's a book, whether that's a movie, uh, whether it's something else, if you can take your mind off things and and get into another world, if you like, um, that will help as well. Music, now music is really, really important, as you may or may not know, in life, genu in, bleh, in life generally. And it's going to be even more important here. So if you build up a playlist of all the artists that you love, all the artists that mean things to you, for me, it's predominantly Peter Gabriel. When I'm in, when I'm in a stage of grieving or grief or trauma and I, I can't cope, my last hope is putting on a Peter Gabriel album. So, it, you know, for you, you'll have an artist. So hold on to that music. And when you need it, put it on. Um, headphones are the best. 
um, because it's more personal, but obviously you do it your own way. But music is very important. I've mentioned this briefly before, but you know, you're keeping your mind busy. So yes, you can zone out on entertainment, but you can also uh, take on projects. If if you're not working, uh, and if you, if you don't feel like you're consistent enough to be able to work, which is absolutely fine, you have every right to feel that. Let all your emotions out as well. Um, if you feel like you're going to burst into tears or if you feel like you're going to you know explode emotionally then do it let it all out but do it as privately as possible i would say um you don't want to freak anyone out and i know that might sound like a really harsh thing to say but it, it it's better in the long run you know let it out in front of family right because family is family um but, you know, try to be um, as neutral as you can for the friends and acquaintances, unless, you know, you have friends that understand you and stuff. So, as I said, um, it, 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 it's down to you and it's a balancing act. But I've always found that you, sh you should let your emotions out but do it in private because, it, it, you know, it doesn't hurt anyone else. You know, you can share the pain with your family or with friends that, that knew that person. Again, I'm, I'm running along with the assumption that it's, it's a, a lost uh, family member or loved one or whoever that you're experiencing right now. Uh, and then for your own peace of mind, express how you feel, uh, either by writing it down in a diary or recording your voice or recording a video not to be shown by anyone to uh, not to be shown to anyone sorry for your own benefit you, and you may not even want to read or listen or watch yourself again but you've you what you've done is you've in some way you've gotten you've written out all these emotions that you're feeling and that can have a of uh, a positive effect on your mental psyche uh, and really the last one here I've got is uh, it, during some painful episodes the pain is so great and you might even want to lash out you might even want to you know do something crazy and that, that's how you feel you know and that's a completely natural human instinct to feel that um but hold on hold on because it won't last all right the pain won't last it's not going it it, it it's painful yes but it but like everything else it won't last Nothing lasts forever in this world. Nothing. But we as human beings have to understand that we have to find our own peace of mind somehow. And it's not until we find our own peace of mind that we are able to tackle these traumatic events uh, with, with less physical pain. Um, I don't know about yourself, but whenever I, you know, I, I never used to suffer this, but whenever I'm, I get hyper anxious or anything like that, uh, my, my skin feels like it's crawling. You know, I feel itchy everywhere and I've developed eczema because of it. And it, it's, it's a horrible feeling and you want it to end but know deep down inside your heart that it will end. It won't be forever, I promise you. The pain does go away to a large degree. Some people say, oh, you, you find a way of, of dealing with it, you know, and that might be the case, um, but you will come to a peaceful point, and I promise you that I do. Um, so yeah, as I keep saying, your experience um, with 
your your current experience or a recent experience will be very different to mine um and you may have mixed feelings about this lost person you may not have liked this person at all or it's a completely different traumatic event but the um, the stages of grief are relatively the same and the techniques to survive and, and cope with these events are going to be the same as well and it is essentially being a bit selfish right isolating yourself and then making sure you have someone that will help you it's it's zoning out on entertainment it's it's taking the focus of your troubles off your mind and onto something else just for a little while it's listening to music right because music is so important it can bring out emotions in you you can go on a beautiful journey it's like having a dream um so keeping your mind busy if you prefer to work if you prefer to do something go out and do it don't think about it just go out and and, and do it or if you can't if you're not consistent enough at the moment then and then keep your mind busy doing something else writing etc uh, and let all the emotions out when they come don't bottle them in but try to do it as privately as possible to avoid any um annoyance or aggravation from anyone else because people won't understand your grief okay people who haven't gone through grief and trauma of this caliber will not understand you they will try to they will try to sympathize but they will not be able to empathize with you this is a journey you must take on your own and you can do it you can do it because you're strong enough and remember what i said which is life is all about finding your own peace of mind everyone has a special skill and you're good at something if you know what that is great if you don't mm -hmm. you, all you've got to do is is work out what that is when you know what that is there's a sense of peace that comes across you and you realize what you like and what you what you want to do uh, whether you you choose to chase those dreams is up to you but don't be disappointed if you if you if you haven't and and, and never will um, because there's a reason for everything so that's it um, this is the end of the podcast I hope it helped you guys um, I will be back for another podcast in a couple of weeks take care um, oh yeah also if you if you want to talk about it just you know leave a comment and um, you know we can all right take care guys